Apple bought Canon today for $32 per share, and a cash deal worth $32.86 billion, or 4.9 trillion yen. As part of the deal, Canon will divest Canon's Office Equipment Division, Medical Equipment Division, and the Industrial Products Division. So, what does that mean for photographers and videographers like you and me? Well, apparently quite a lot. Will Apple force us to buy a Mac in order to get full functionality out of new cameras like the R5 Mark II or the EOS R1? I'm going to answer that question and many others by taking a closer look at the press release and their stated objectives for, well, what they want to get out of this deal. In the second paragraph of Apple's press release, Apple stated that by combining Apple's cutting-edge technology and design expertise with Canon's renowned imaging heritage, the acquisition will enable Apple to reinvent the world of photography and videography. Apple clearly feels that their iOS operating system has changed cell phones forever. The first iPhone was definitely a dramatic departure from cell phones of the time. A few years later, Apple reinvented the tablet with the iPad based on the same iOS, costing just $499 and going on to make Apple hundreds of billions of dollars. And while people made fun of the iPad name back in 2012, calling it a silly name among other things, no one's laughing at them now. And let's give credit where credit's due. Apple did change the tablet market. Before the introduction of the iPad, tablets were a niche market, with fewer than 50,000 sales each year worldwide. And before the iPhone, the BlackBerry with its keyboard was considered leading edge. On the day of the iPhone's announcement, Research in Motion didn't see the iPhone as a threat. And that was RIM's fatal mistake. Could not taking this deal seriously by Canon's competition be seen as their fatal mistake? Could this deal change the photo and video world? Would we look back in 10 years from now and see this as the day that everything changed? Some appreciate Apple's design philosophy of simplicity and minimalism, uncluttered interfaces, but sophisticated in function. The synergies of being able to design both the software and the hardware together. But others feel that it's too constrained, that it's unable to expand or breathe. Apple made it clear that with this acquisition, Apple brings its signature design philosophy and user experience to Canon's lineup of cameras, making them more intuitive, powerful, and seamlessly integrated with Apple's ecosystem of devices and services. While this press release tells us very little in terms of details, Japanese message boards are lighting up with people making all sorts of comments from, I'm switching to Sony, I'm switching to Nikon, to, hey, maybe this will transform and make these cameras more usable, more intuitive. And some are eager to see Apple reinvent the camera like they did with the cell phone and the iPad bringing computational enhancements to photo, video, and usability. Apple also outlined five objectives that they expect to achieve. The first objective is to improve the user experience by implementing AI algorithms to automate complex camera functions, making it easier for users to capture high quality photos and video. As a professional photographer and videographer, I actually like this one. I don't necessarily need a faster camera. I don't necessarily need more megapixels. What I want out of a camera is to think, well, a little bit more like me. I want it to follow the subject that I'm following, not getting confused when the subject becomes temporarily hidden or moved out of the frame. I want it to be able to automate exposure based on the autofocus tracking point. I want it to improve low light performance to reduce noise. Apple's second objective is to utilize AI for advanced image processing, including noise reduction, image enhancement, and intelligent scene recognition, resulting in superior image quality. But what does Apple mean by image enhancement or intelligent scene recognition? Does this mean that, well, Apple's going to take a lot of their image enhancement capabilities from their iPhone and the iPad and bring those to cameras such as the Canon EOS R5 Mark II or the Canon EOS R1? Or could they potentially replicate image enhancement capabilities found more in line with advanced imaging applications? And if done right, if done aimed at pros and hobbyists instead of entry-level camera users that most of the 
capabilities found in iPhones and iPads are aimed at, if aimed at pros, hobbyists, well, this could be groundbreaking. And to help shed light on where Apple's targeting this, they plan to stop making point and shoot as well as entry level cameras. The acquisition will enable Apple to reinvent the world of photography and videography focused on the mid market and high end cameras. For those of you that always identified more with the PC than the Mac, you might not like this objective. Enable Canon cameras to seamlessly connect with Apple devices, allowing for easy transfer, edit, and sharing of photos and videos. Imagine just for a moment that Apple integrates cellular capabilities found in the iPhone into upcoming cameras, such as the EOS R5 Mark II or the Canon EOS R1 allowing us to seamlessly upload images that we take in the field into the cloud, allowing us to easily transfer images right from our camera to photo agencies, to colleagues. That would be a bit of a game changer, wouldn't it? My only fear with this seamless integration is Apple's track record of soldering storage directly onto the PCB. Do you like the idea of removable storage in your Canon camera? Do you like the idea of CF Express Type A, Type B, or even UHS 2 SD card slots? Or do you like the idea of having one or two or four terabytes of MBME fast memory inside your camera? Personally, I'm not ready to give up removable storage. Let me know what you think in the comment section down below. Perhaps Apple has been paying attention to Canon patent filings. Their fourth objective is to introduce new AI powered features or functions such as intelligent focus, subject tracking, and scene detection, enhancing the overall shooting experience. Having the camera through AI think like a photographer could actually work out. Being able to expose the scene properly based on the subject, based on the autofocus point, could be a real benefit, as long as the camera doesn't start thinking like how. But is AI advanced enough at this point? I've been using ChatGPT and Sora AI as well as some other AI capabilities and I got to admit, initially I was very impressed. The one thing about ChatGPT that it does very well is to be able to create natural language conversation, but if you scratch just a little bit beneath the surface, a lot of times what it's saying is, well, maybe not nonsense, but completely inaccurate. It sounds very plausible, but it gets facts wrong all the time. And Sora AI, which I'm seeing an awful lot of commentary on lately, it does look pretty good. Being able to expose and light the scene properly based on what you tell it to do. But on the other side, if you look a little closer and scratch between the surface, you can see that it's clearly generated by a computer. It doesn't look as natural when we look at grass, leaves, or water. Do you think I'm being overly critical? Well, in this clip, I'm going to show you how far off Sora's judgment capabilities actually are. Everything does look realistic. The mood, lighting, exposure, and even the framing. But take a close look at how she walks. Did you see that skip? Feels off, doesn't it? Doesn't fit the mood. Think it's some sort of expression of creativity? No. Stay focused on her legs. Now that, that's not realistic. No human could walk that way or would ever make that kind of mistake when creating a generated image. And it shows that Sora and other AI tools are, are far from understanding reality. Has Apple solved this? Because in their fifth objective, they seem to double down on AI. By integrating AI, we aim to ensure that our cameras remain at the forefront of imaging technology for many years to come. So what's Apple's timeline? Well, it's almost as aggressive as migrating away from Intel processors. Phase one, which begins immediately, is to complete the acquisition and enable their business transformation plan. Phase two is to refresh mid-level and high-end mirrorless cameras, and this should be completed within two years. And phase three, continuously improve and update AI-powered features for photographers and videographers. Are you sensing a bit of a theme here? that artificial intelligence is going to play a much larger role in upcoming cameras such as the Canon EOS R5 Mark II and the Canon EOS R1. That artificial intelligence is going to play a key role when it comes to autofocus, tracking the subject, whether the subject's alone or in a crowd, whether they're obscured by an object temporarily, or even if they move in and out of the frame, not hunting, not 
searching, not creating those artifacts that really just make the scene useless. Artificial intelligence could prove beneficial. It started with the Canon 1DX Mark III. That had deep learning, and Canon's continued to improve the autofocus system with every camera it's released since. But could this be the reason why the Canon EOS R5 Mark II, along with the Canon EOS R1, is delayed? Is delayed till March or April when the R1 is usually released every four years and is announced in January and then comes onto the market just a few months later? Perhaps. But you see, this video is an April Fool's video. This isn't real. And while Canon is working on the EOS R5 Mark II and the EOS R1 and that it will have improved artificial intelligence capabilities, it's not going to have the help of Apple. Apple isn't buying Canon. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope I was able to pull you along into the story long enough, but let me know what you think in the comments section down below. Did this video annoy you or did you enjoy it? And at what point did you realize that it was fake? This is my second April Fool's video. Last year, I did an April Fool's video on the Canon EOS R1, a camera with 102 megapixels, dual CF Express Type-C card slots, 12K video, and some pretty impressive capabilities. I do recommend taking a look at that video. It's rather interesting, and I don't think we're going to get anything quite close to that. And for next year, let me know what you would like me to do as an April Fool's video, or if you'd like me to scrap it all together. Let me know in the comments section down below. And if you're interested in staying up to date on the latest camera gear news and rumors, then go ahead and subscribe, but also follow me on X. And if you're interested in purchasing new camera gear, such as cameras, lenses, or accessories, then please consider using my affiliate links down below, these ones right here. Uh, they really do help this channel grow. I get anywhere from 2 to 12% back, and that goes right back into this channel. I don't take any income from this channel, and it's what's allowed me, your purchases have allowed me to buy the recently announced Canon EOS 200 to 800 millimeter, the 100 to 500 millimeter, the 50 millimeter f1.2, the R5, and has already delivered funding to be able to buy the Canon EOS R5 Mark II, a bunch of new lenses this year, including the 24 to 105 f2.8, and maybe, just maybe, the Canon EOS R1, if it is, the jack of all trades and the master of everything. But on that note, have yourself a great day, a great week, and we'll see you again soon.